Okay, today we're going to be looking at polyprotic acids, specifically an example involving hydrogen sulfide. Okay, in our example we're going to have a 0.25 molar solution of hydrogen sulfide. We're going to titrate that with a strong base until we get to 6.9 on the pH scale. It's important to note here that the addition of the strong base will not significantly affect the solution's volume. So this is what we're going after. We're, we will be looking to estimate the concentrations of the three species that you see at the bottom of your screen. Okay, we're going to first begin with looking at the first deprotonation, that is H2S going to HS plus H. First thing we're going to do is look at the henderson hasselbalch equation. We're going to rearrange it to solve for pKa. It's just that's more of a preference thing. Um, here's the general form. We'll go ahead and move it up there. Switch those two around. Okay, and now we're going to replace the H plus and the HA of the general form. For the HA, in the first deprotonation, is going to be the H2S, and the H plus is going to be the HS minus. That just flows from the first equation. Okay. Now we're going to have to express those symbolically somehow if we hope to solve for them. So what will help us do that is an ice table. So we'll set one up down there. And plugging in what we already know gives us these values here. Okay, and now we've got these values that we can go ahead and move up to our new equation. Uh, it's important to note that the pKa1 value for the first deprotonation, you're gonna, we're going to have to get that from a table or have it given in a test or something like that. That's an empirical bit of data. Okay. Go ahead and move those two over there. And it's uh, just solving the math from here. So we get rid of the log and go ahead and just solve for x. And that's going to put us at x is equal to 0 0.127. OK, now thinking back to our original expressions, that this is what that x is equal to 0.127 gives us, the concentration of H2S and the concentration of HS minus. Therefore, these become that. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and set up an ice table for the second deprotonation, the one in which HS minus goes to S2 minus and a hydronium ion. Okay. We'll go ahead and bring our value from HS minus into there. Now, if you remember correctly, the initial problems gave us the pH, and from that we could discern the H3O concentration in the end. So using that there, and this is going to be our change row. We're going to have the um, reaction once again shifting towards the right. So it's going to be minus x in the case of HS, plus x in the case of the other two. Now, given that information, you can see we set up a expression for Ka2. Okay. Now, we know from either the text, a table, online, wherever, that this is the experimental value for Ka2 for the second deprotonization of H2S. Okay, we're going to move the values in there and then. We can actually do something special here because as the pH change is not too large, we can go ahead and ignore the plus x and the minus x, i.e. the non-multiplying x's, the one that's the, not the one there on the top. We can go ahead and, and assume that they are zero. It's not, it makes it a little less right, but you're dealing on magnitudes where the difference really does not matter. So we're assuming a small pH, and there we go. Okay, doing the math all the way through, we get x to be equal to 7.16 times 10 to the negative 19th molar. 
and those are the two that we got before. Okay, so what that number represents is our S2 minus concentration. Okay, let's go ahead and review what we've done. We started with what was given by the problem and everything. We had the henderson hasselbalch equation a little changed, and from that we were able to solve for the x value there, which we expressed from an ice table, so 1 and 2 were kind of at the same time. And so actually right off this bat we were able to get the first two concentrations. From that and from the given pH we set up another ice table which allowed us to set up an expression for Ka and solve for the third. Seems daunting, not too bad.